No, she didn't come home last night. Thank you, Simone. Just let me know if, if you hear it. Never mind. You didn't think I was coming back? No. Are you back to stay? I'm back because I'm trying to figure out what the hell happened to us. I still love you more than I ever did. I'm not sure I can stay here. I don't know if this is even a marriage anymore. I know I want it to be. The question is whether you can still love me. I wish it were that easy. I wish I love you solved everything. I am sorry that I hurt you. But I know I made the right decision. I'm still trying to wrap my head around my husband. A man so strong and so brave and so wonderful. A man who would make any kid proud. Medically fixing it so that we can never have a baby together. Don't you regret it at all? Even a little? Greenlee, we've had this out already. I'm not going there. I don't think you realize how I feel. The greatest gift I've been given decided to take away the greatest gift he could ever give me. The worst part is you did it behind my back. You didn't even talk to me about it. You couldn't have changed my mind. How do I get past the dishonesty, Ryan? Because I'm really having trouble with that one. I feel like a part of me has died. How can you justify lying to me? How can you justify how I feel? Greenlee, do you really think that going six rounds over this would have made us more honest? Because I doubt it. Look, once I realized that this was the only way, the only way that I could make love to you, I had to take this step without you. I want to understand. How does our marriage survive after what you've done? You knew how I felt, Greenlee. I never made that a secret. And you knew I thought it was just as important to keep this option open. I believe that a baby would show you how much good you have in you. Nothing I could have said would have made it OK with you. But I knew that I could prove it to you, that this is the right decision. I still can. OK, so let me get these new rules straight. Obviously, they've changed. Are you saying it's OK not to tell the truth? As long as it saves us? Yes. That's exactly what I'm saying. If we really believe that our actions will save each other, why not tell each other? Because sometimes people don't realize what's best for them in the long run. I agree. So we trust that the other person loves us enough to do the right thing? Yes and have faith and don't give up on us. I can still prove to you that this is the right decision. We can still be happy. Happy seems a long time down the road. I know it does. I heard you late into Dr. Cooper. Couldn't tear you apart, so I went after the next responsible party. Don't blame him. Blame me. I told him that you were on board with this. I see. So you lied to the doctor, too, about me. Okay, I'll try to get my head around that, too. Will you? Will you at least give this marriage a chance like this? You haven't left me any choices. Is there a shot that you can get past this? Maybe there is a way to give this marriage a shot of hope. Name it. Well, one time that you said I needed help, professional help. Maybe you're right. Maybe at a time like this, I should talk this over with the doctor. Great. Anything to get our marriage back the way it was. Anything? Anything. Anything to keep you in my life. That settles it then. <sighs> I'm so glad you feel that way. Well, where are you going? Are you going to the doctor right now? Oh, yeah. This is for us, Ryan. I'm going to do my damnedest.
help you. I'm Mrs. Ryan Lavery, and I would like my husband's sperm, please. You have it in back, frozen somewhere. I want it. I want you to make me pregnant. Ryan. Hey. Hey. Um, I heard about your procedure, because Greenlee was in here yesterday ripping on Dr. Cooper and me and... Yeah, I heard, but I didn't know you were involved. Yeah, hey, she's, she's pretty upset. Well, she's got every right to be. Well, we had a talk. I mean, I, I tried to to get her to focus on how much you guys love each other and your marriage, and but I don't know if she heard me. Well, something you said must have filtered through because she came home and we talked, and she seemed to understand what I did, and she even started to believe that we could have a happy marriage without kids. Well, I don't have an account number, but the name of the donor is my husband, Lavery, Ryan Lavery. I know for a fact he left enough little swimmers on deposit to make a billion babies, so let's get them defrosted and inside me on the double. This is the optimal day in my cycle to conceive. Mrs. Lavery, what OBGYN referred you? That guy who runs a great big HMO in the sky? Who said be fruitful and multiply? Well, the doctor will still need your records, perform an internal exam, take your medical history, uh, consent forms, insurance, blood work. You know, red tape and bureaucratic BS doesn't exist in nature. You just put a man and a woman together and voila. Then I suggest you avoid all this red tape, find your husband, and voila. Our whole future depends on Greenlee understanding why I had to do something so drastic. Making our future 100% childhood. These are your, your post-op test results. Looks like the procedure was a success. Funny they don't make greeting cards for this occasion. Uh, Brian, look, tell me this. Did you do this because of Edmund? Did you do it because your brother killed my husband? Nurse. My husband is no longer capable of producing and delivering his own genetic materials. But given he had the foresight to have several million of the little tykes frozen for future freshness, I don't see there's a problem with me, his wife, making a withdrawal. And I'm trying to explain that's not how this clinic operates. Look, I can prove I'm Mrs. Ryan Lavery. You want ID? Here, I've got it. It's my passport, my, uh, my driver's license, my Lacey's VIP platinum card. This entitles me to his sperm. Mrs. Lavery, we don't operate as a bank even though that's how the public perceives us. Yeah, and I'm not bucking for a wall calendar or a free toaster. We work with anonymous donors who are assigned lot numbers. There are confidentiality issues, legal liabilities. We maintain a very strict protocol according to the highest standards. Why didn't you say so? What a cool sow. Take the edge off any legal liabilities, huh? I'll sign a waiver to avoid any embarrassing lawsuits. No? 5,000? 10,000? How much to pave over any legal stumbling box, okay? 15,000, I'm good for it. I'm loaded. And if we have a girl, I'll name her after you, Hazel. Mrs. Lavery, is there someone I can call? Your husband? I told you I don't need my husband right now. I need you. I can't help you. We can't help you. So if you just go quietly. How can I make this clear? I'm not leaving this place without enough fertilizer to make my blossoms grow. Now fork it over. Who are they? Mrs. Lavery, these ladies have come to escort you out. They touch me and die. I have tried to explain why we can't accommodate your request. Mm, accommodate this. Let go of me. Let go of me. Let go of me. What the Let devil go. is going on here? Mrs. Lavery tried to bribe me into releasing her husband's donation. I said let go. It's all right, Hazel. Mrs. Lavery, isn't it? Who are you? The procreation police? I'm Dr. Madden. This is my clinic. Doc, your nurse's front office manner could use a lot of work, not to mention the tag team twins. I beg your pardon, doctor, but this woman stormed in I'll here. take it from here, Hazel. It's all right. Mrs. Lavery, would you care to step into my office? Please, take a seat. Now, from what I gather, your husband made a donation here, and you want it back. Thank you. Finally, someone who gets it. When can I get it? 
Well, you can't. No. Don't you go all his on me. Mrs. Lavery, your husband signed a contract stipulating that he would remain anonymous. I know who Ryan is, so no problem. Prospective parents, they get a profile of the sperm donor. They get medical history, physical data. They never get the identity. So it's not as if you can walk in here and you can order up a sample of Ryan Lavery. I can and I am. No, I'm afraid you cannot. There's also the matter of the quit claim. You see, when your husband received financial compensation for his donation, he gave up all rights to our purchase. So it's almost as if he sold us a house and you've come in here asking for a room back. Well, not a big room, just the baby's nursery. To put it quite simply, neither you nor your husband has any legal rights to his donation or any issue therefrom. Doctor, I'm a businesswoman. In every contract, there's a loophole. Help me find one. I suppose it might make a difference if your husband were to be here and he could state his own case. Well, there's only one problem with that. He's been through a terrible trauma. He's temporarily deranged. What Jonathan did to Edmund puts what it means to be a lavery right in my face, but Maria, it already existed. It was already there, the rage, the, the fire burning in my stomach. And I had to make sure that that is, is not passed on to a child, an innocent child, or that it could come back and hurt a child or hurt Greenlee. Pretty radical move, though. Only choice I could make. Well, I know you believe that, but... I'm a doctor, I'm a scientist, so I, I don't believe that evil is genetic. Tell that to my late brothers. Look, I know that I made the right decision. I mean, I've been walking around with the entire Lavery family on my back, and now that it seems that Greenlee and I have dodged that bullet, the weight is lifted and the fire in my stomach is, is finally starting to go out, and I can't tell you how good that feels. Well, you know, I... Gotta give it to you because I, I don't even think most guys would have admitted there was any problem at all. They probably just would have thrown themselves into work or started drinking too much or taking it out on everybody, you know, around them. And you you saw a threat to your future with Greenlee and you did something about it. So I I mean, I think your your science is a little fuzzy. I also think that lies and marriage are obviously not good, but I have to say, I admire you for what you did. No matter what, I love Ryan more than anyone or anything. And you have to know what a change that is for me. I used to be the most selfish bitch you ever crossed the street to get away from. Well, we all tend to be our own worst critics. I'm not exaggerating. I was completely self-absorbed. It was Greenlee's world and you were lucky to live in it. And that changed for a lot of reasons. But the biggest reason is Ryan. Like, there was this thing that I always did, passing a store window and checking out my look. And after I knew that I wanted a baby with Ryan, I was passing Lacey's big display window, and I did my usual hair flip and half smile. And I saw myself reflected back with a little girl. And I was holding her hand, my little girl. And Ryan was on the other side of her, holding her other hand. Our little family. Doctor, I ache for her, or for him. Not just for myself, but for Ryan. But now he's had this damn procedure because he thinks his DNA is poison. Well, as far as I know, genetic mapping has failed to isolate the evil chromosome. Something you need to know about my husband, he is the most loyal, wonderful, unselfish man on the planet. But he's got it in his head that bringing another Lavery into the world would be like releasing the dogs of the damned. I want to prove to this amazing man that ending his chances for a child was wrong. And I can do that with your help. I can present him with the most beautiful, well-behaved, non-homicidal child. You really want this baby. And for the most unselfish reasons. Thank you. Thank you for understanding. Will you help me save my husband? Thank you.